Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. Welcome to another Southern California Prep Insider Baseball Podcast. Tommy and Les here. And Les, I'm, I think I'm coming down with a little bit of a fever here. It's a kind of playoff fever. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> well played. Well played. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting there, man. We are uh, a week away. Uh, actually, next Tuesday, we'll have the wild card round games here in the southern section. So it should be pretty fun. Yeah, so playoffs right around the corner last week of regular season action, so we got to talk about it. Obviously, Les, we'll start with the top ten. Yeah, let's get going on that. Harvard Westlake checks in at number one. They clinched the outright Mission League championship. Uh, they're rolling, man. They're, they're just a really, really good team looking for that perfect 15-0 and record um, in league, and, and they should be the top seed come CIF Division I playoff time. Number two, Orange Lutheran. They clinched the Trinity League Championship outright last night. They got a win against Santa Margarita, and they got a little help from Jay Serra that beat St. John Bosco. Number three, Miracosta. Huge two-game set against Redondo. This is the series we've been waiting for all season for these guys. Uh, these two games will decide the Bay League Championship. I'm actually headed up there today to catch the first game. La Mirada checks in at number four. They won the uh, Suburban League title again. It seems like they do that every year. Just another loaded team. Uh, number five, Huntington Beach. They won yet another Sunset League championship. Uh, last week they clinched that. Uh, so they're rolling pretty good. Arcadia, look, Arcadia is undefeated. But this week they'll have their biggest test. Uh, they got a two-game set against Crescenta Valley. That will decide the Pacific League championship. Both teams come in at 12-0, and 0, so this should be a really, really good matchup. Uh, El Toro checking in next. They lost again yesterday to a good Capital Valley team. Uh, but they still have a chance to win the title uh, with two games left between these two. Capital Valley wins tomorrow. They're league champs. El Toro wins tomorrow. They force that decisive game three winner take all come Thursday. Uh, next is Beckman. Two games against University this week. The Patriots have a chance to uh, win the outright title in the Pacific Coast League. Uh, number nine, Etiwanda. I saw them put a beat down on a good Damian team yesterday. Uh, they can win league outright with uh, one more win against the Spartans uh, tomorrow. Uh, if, if Damian wins, they force that winner take all on Thursday. Uh, and lastly but not least, number 10 is Corona. They can clinch the Big 8 title with a win over Santiago today. If Santiago wins, again, that forces another winner-take-all on Thursday, which, I mean, I love those games, right? I mean, it's just high intensity. I was at the game yesterday, like I mentioned, against Etiwanda and Damian. I mean, from the first pitch, it was like a playoff atmosphere. Uh, you know, Etiwanda blew the game open early, though. Kind of took a little wind out of the sails there, but still really high-intensity game, a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, whoever did the scheduling uh, for all these things obviously knew what they were doing. So put the, the two teams that were going to be at the top right at the end there for those three-game sets. Uh, players of the week from last week, I'm going to start with mine. Uh, Ethan Cloyd from Dunn, 6 for 13 last week, 10 RBIs and a home run. From South Hills, Nicholas Lugo, he was 4 for 8, 5 RBIs in a double, in a double hunter, excuse me, against Diamond Bar. He'll be playing at Hawaii Hilo next year. Chris Torres from Sierra Canyon. Through a complete game, I'm about to go through a run of complete game shutouts, Les. So here they come. Um, okay. uh, Chris Torres from Sierra Canyon through a complete game shutout, seven strikeouts against Pericle. A uh, big game for them there. Uh, JD Deenan uh, from La Sierra through a complete game shutout with eight strikeouts versus Norte Vista. And if you see the pattern that's coming, a complete game of seven, then eight. What do you think is next? It's Bo Henderson from Palos Verdes with a complete game shutout with nine strikeouts, only allowed one hit against Redondo U. Well, I'm going to top you on the strikeout factor okay. here. I'm going to go with Cole Wynn. Uh, you know, Cole Wynn's a potential top five pick in the MLB draft here next month. At the worst, the top ten pick uh, over at Orange Lutheran. He won a complete game shutout, 13 strikeouts against Modern Day, allowing only three hits, didn't walk anybody. Uh, expect to hear his name early in the draft next month. Moving out to Mo Valley, Cody Shepard out of Valley View High School. He's a junior, threw a complete game shutout, allowed only one hit, walking one, striking out seven. It was also one for three at the plate. Back into Orange County, Braden Murphy, junior, Long Beach State committed shortstop, went uh, four for seven with two doubles, three RBIs, and three stolen bases in two games last week. 
Then head over to Arcadia, sophomore Dustin Allen was four for seven in two games against Pasadena. Had a double, two RBIs, and two runs scored. All right, so those are our shout-outs from the players from last week going on to the game picks, starting with Elisa Miguel and Mission Viejo. They've got two games this week. Yeah, huge, huge series for potential playoff positioning out of the South Coast League. Mission Viejo has got a one-game lead on Aliso. Diablo's been a little streaky this season, and they're on a pretty good streak right now. they have won six of their last seven. aliso uh, has been a little inconsistent this season. They really need these two games in order to have a shot at a postseason berth. In a sense, they're a little desperate. Desperate teams can be pretty dangerous, as we know. Uh, but in the end, though, I think Mission Viejo is just playing really well right now, so I'm going to go with the Diablos in this one. I'll go the other way. I'll take the Wolverines. They've got 25 home runs as a team. Uh, Evan, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, Evan Fitter with seven of them. Michael Devanini with five, and Nick Sorensen and Connor Cox both have four apiece. So they've got, in the middle of that lineup, a lot to deal with. Yeah, Fitterer is a really, really good pitcher, too, uh, for Elisa Miguel, Elisa Miguel. So we'll see how that plays out. Next, we've got Downey at Gar, or Downey versus Gar, excuse me, because there's two games. So what do you think? Yeah, these are the type of games where you just kind of throw out the records when these two guys meet. I mean, big-time rivals. just so happens that they're the top two teams in the San Gabriel Valley League standings. Downey's 8-0, Gar 7-1. The math is simple on this one for Downey. Win one game and you're league champs. Gar needs to win two to force a winner-take-all scenario on Thursday. Really like Gar's front-line pitching, so I think they'll force that scenario. Ultimately win league and this series, so I'm going to go with Gar. I'm going to go with Downey. Jacob Garcia, 1-7-2 ERA, 7-2 record. Sebastian Diaz coming out of the bullpen with a .9 ERA to shut the door, so... We'll see uh, what happens there next. We're going to Thursday. It's a small school game, Sage Hill at St. Margaret's. Yeah, Sage Hill's really had a nice run last couple of seasons, both in league and in the postseason. This season has been a little bit of a different story for the Lightning with some inconsistencies that we just haven't seen in the recent past. St. Margaret's is playing some really good baseball in league and hold a one-game lead over Sage Hill. Both teams are looking up to uh, division leader Crane Lutheran. Uh, Coach Wallace has the St. Margaret's team playing some uh, really good ball at a high level. We've gotten some quality pitching and some timely hitting. I like what Sage Hill has done under, under Coach Campo recently, but I just think that St. Margaret's has had a tad too much for them this week, so I'm going to go with St. Margaret's. Three disagreements in a row. This has to be a record. I'm going to go with Sage Hill here. Uh, Ashwin Chona, 117, excuse me, in ERA. Drake Mossman with a 146 ERA, so I don't know who they're going to see. Probably one of those two guys. Uh, the one thing that does scare me, though, about the Lightning is Bats not really coming alive this year. Trevor Klein's hitting 406, so he's going to have to really be uh, the the run maker here against St. Marcus, but I like St. Chill. Uh, next, Simi Valley. Go. I think this is some sort of record. Man. I know. <laughs> we just, we just agree on this one. Record in three in a row, that's definitely a record. Simi Valley at Moore Park. What do you think? Simi Valley comes into this series one game back of Moore Park and riding a six-game win streak. With Owen Sharks on the mound, the Pioneers have a legitimate shot to win every game he starts. Moore Park was rolling a bit there before losing 2-3 or three to Camarillo last week and, and uh, own, a, own a win over Simi already this season. Simi Valley really needs to win both and hope for a Camarillo loss in order to claim a league title. A tall order, I think. I'm going to go with Moore Park in this one. Uh, the streak ends. I'm going to go with Moore Park as well. Billy Freeman shot him out, hitting 351 this year. Zach Tipton uh, for Moore Park with a 105 ERA. Final game, it's Cypress at Pacifica. Both teams undefeated in league play going into this match. You know, a lot like the Downey and Gar series, when these two guys meet, you can throw the records out. They just both happen to be undefeated in league. I really like what Cameron Rapetti is providing on the mound for Cyprus. And, you know, guys like Braden Murphy, who we gave a shout-out to as player of the week, really getting it done at the plate. On the flip side, Pacifica is really hitting the ball right now really, really well. Pitching's been a little up and down, but it's been pretty good recently. Again, this is one of those rivalry games where you just kind of throw out the records, but... I just like what Cypress is doing, so I'm going to go with Centurions in this one. Starting new streak, I agree with, Cyp uh, with you with Cypress as well. They have a better record as common opponents, all other things being equal. That's what I went off of. So there it is. Those are our game picks. Those are our players of the week and a top 10, less anything else. Yeah, hey, we're rolling out our 2021 top players here at the end of this week. We'll also roll out some top uncommitted players heading into the summer. Be sure to check us out, PBR uh, underscore California on Twitter, PBR California on Instagram. And the website is prepbaseballreport.com slash California. 2021, that makes me feel very old. <laughs> I'm older than you, so I do what I feel like. All right, Les, thank you very much. 
to you guys. We'll see you next week when we're in the playoffs.